Now, in order to fully understand spectroscopy, we need to understand the nature of light. And so this video is going to be a really uh, brief and fast overview of the nature of light. You've seen this in general chemistry and maybe physics classes. So nature, light, it's dual natured. It behaves as a wave and it behaves as a particle. And when it behaves as a particle, we call that particle a photon. Now there's mathematical equations that help us <coughs> uh, describe how light behaves. And so I want to make sure we understand those, those equations. So if, if we're looking at light as a wave, the equation that describes that is the speed of light, represented by C, equals the frequency times the wavelength. And these are our Greek symbols, nu and lambda. And the speed of light is going to be constant. And so the thing that's changing is the frequency and the wavelength of the light. <clears throat> so wavelength and frequency are inversely proportionate to one another. So what that means, if the wavelength is getting larger, right, that means the frequency of that light is going to go down. And so the opposite would be true as well. If the wavelength is getting smaller, then the frequency is going to get higher or larger. So if we look at a wave, okay, the wavelength is between the crest of one wave and the crest of the other. That right there is the wavelength. Now, if we compare, let's draw a green wave here. We see that the wavelength right there is now shorter. And so the this light right here has a larger wavelength, but a smaller frequency. Because when we look at frequency, we're basically counting how many crests there are in a certain amount of time. So if we just say, hey, here's our time restraints. How many wave crests are there within that time frame? We can see that there's three for the black line and one, two, three, four, five, six in the green line. So the black wavelength of light is going to have a larger wavelength and a smaller frequency in comparison to the green line. So the green one is going to have a smaller wavelength but a higher frequency. So if the if we look at light as a particle or a photon of light, the equation changes up a little bit and the relationship that we have is that the energy of a photon is going to be equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. The frequency of what? The frequency of the photon of light that we're looking at. Okay. And so Planck's constant, you could Google it or I'll just write it real quick. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Okay. And this equation right here helps us to understand that the energy of a photon of light, okay, the energy of the photon of light is going to be directly proportional to the frequency of that photon. So that means if the frequency of the photon goes up, then that means the energy of that photon goes up. So vice versa, if the frequency of the light goes down, then the energy also goes down. So if we come back up here and put it together here, 
if we look at these two wavelengths of light, the black light versus the green one, which one is going to have more energy? The green one is going to have more energy because energy is proportional to the frequency. And the green light has a higher frequency. So it's going to have a higher energy. And we've seen this in life. X-rays have a very tiny wavelength and a high frequency. That is why when we go to the doctors, they're like, you can only have like one or two X-rays a year because the light or the X-rays is so high in energy that it can get you sick. But radio waves are much larger and we use them all the time because they're so low in energy, they're not going to cause us major harm. Okay. So that is a summary of light. And if you grasp this and you are reminded of this, then going through the spectroscopy content, you will do just fine.